the bow's virtually finished. I've not done a high quality finish on it because as a flight bow it's neither going to get sold nor used a lot. I'll give you a bit of a look around. You can see on the back here the underbark surface has just been left for the most part except at this end where I've had to slim the sapwood and you can see where I've cut through growth things there but I've left them running along the length of the bow. That gives you an idea of the size of the knocks, nice small knocks. The overall profile of the bow, it's very slab sided, fairly rectangular, you know, rounded, rounded the corners where it will be in the hand, especially at the arrow pass as well, because you want a good clean arrow flight. Uh, it's more rounded at the tips obviously, and here's some of the features. You've got a filled, filled pin knot there. That's that big V-shaped wedge I had to put in where the rot was. Another couple of filled pin knots there. That's about it. The string is only eight strands of um, Astro Flight. I do go thinner sometimes on flight bows down to six strands, but I want this to be relatively tough and usable. It's not been served yet in the centre, but I'll pad that out with extra few extra strands and plenty of serving so pretty much ready to get it on the tiller right I've got the bow virtually fully placed it's, it's a whisk of under six inches might come up slightly but I made the string it's been on there for about an hour or two which has let the string settle and given the bow a bit of a warm-up I'm a bit nervy about how far I dare pull it and if I'm going to use it as a flight bow, I'm not sure if I'll draw it as a flight bow to 27 or 28 inches. So I might not go the full 28, I might quit early, because you want to keep a bow fresh as a flight bow. You don't have a 28 inch draw flight bow and pull a damn thing to 32. Uh, one more time on the tiller. As I said before the finish, it's not been tidied up to a high finish, I won't inlay an arrow plate, I won't do anything like that. The horn knocks aren't buffed up, I might buff them up later because that's quite fun. I might give it a wipe of Danish oil and some wax just to protect it. I might sit down for this one as I want to pull it fairly hard. Give it some exercise. Right, there's 60. At 70 at about 25 and a half. Uh, that was a good 26. No, so it's not gonna make it's not gonna make 80. There, that was 27. That will do. I'm about 75 pounds, so I've come in slightly underweight, well underweight at 27, so at 28 inches I'll be probably another 3 pounds there, I'm close to my 28, but the point of trying to hit a draw weight, you should always have a target draw weight, else you're just making a bow in a vacuum, you know, you, you've got to have some sort of aim, so you know how far to pull it early on, but the vital thing is the tiller. You'd, I'd rather have a 70 pound bow with good tiller than an 80 pound bow with bad tiller that's more likely to break. So yes have a target weight, always have a target weight, but tiller's the important thing. Well it didn't go bang so I'm really pleased with that. Now if only I could pull it I'd be alright. I'm sure if I just reinstate my push-ups night and morning get an arrow on it and draw it because some people find the opposite but I find it's much easier to draw a bow with an arrow on it because you're focused on the target and you're, you're thinking about doing that rather than think oh can I pull the bow back you know anyway enough blethering now I've done that I can relax and I can enjoy my lunchtime catnap 
which I'm allowed to have because I'm old enough and I've been very well behaved. <laughs>